Hi guys and uh, <clears throat> welcome to my review of the Wizer HE03D. Um, before I start my review, I just want to clarify a few points uh, so that I am not uh, in any way uh, misinterpreted or, or, or perceived to be biased or, or something of the sorts. Okay, number one. Everything you see in front of you, of you now, I've bought it. So um, I, I feel that by having bought all of them, I have the right to have my opinion, uh, be that opinion an opinion which is to the liking of the manufacturers or not. Um, and even if I hadn't bought them, even if these uh, IEMs had been given to me uh, by the manufacturers for, um, for reviewing, I still feel that I have the right to give my honest, sincere opinion. Um, and that's the only way manufacturers can grow and can improve and can become criticism, contrary to what we are brought up in to believe. Criticism is not a bad thing. Constructive criticism is one thing. Normal criticism is another. So constructive criticism is not bad. Constructive criticism is supposed to, um, to, to show us what we have been doing wrong or what we've been doing good and improve upon those things okay when criticism is done just in the normal way without any backing up or without any any justification for it then yes then criticism can be perceived as bad that's the first thing i wanted to clear the second thing i wanted to clear is the fact that at the end of the day this is all about sound about how you enjoy that sound uh, and it doesn't matter if you get your your joy out of an earphone that costs five dollars I myself have, have had that happen to me many times. I still remember when I first heard the KZ EDX, I was like, oh my God, this thing actually plays half decent for an IEM of this price. Uh, or whether you're listening to um, a, 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 let's say a Shure EJ07M, which is uh, 600 and something dollars. So, or even more expensive, it doesn't matter. If, if an earphone does it for you, that's the main thing, I think. Okay, so it's all about enjoying the music and enjoying how that music is reproduced and, and, and everything. And I've always tried in my reviews, and I always try in my reviews, to be uh, as, as sincere, as, 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 as uh, transparent as possible. And I try to do it in a, in a humble way. Um, Yes, there might be occasions where I might get a little bit uh, uh, over, uh, over, uh, over excited, or, or you know, because I just cannot sometimes understand how certain things are done by certain manufacturers. Uh, you know, we are supposed to evolve, not devolve, and and it's it's sometimes very frustrating for me to 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 understand that you know when when you've done something good you then improve upon it you do something better you don't go back at least at the very least you do something of equal quality okay anyway with that out of the way what i'm basically trying to say is that every single one of these earphones that you see in front of you wizard he01 t force u1 lee bq uiz autumn hana 2021 Wizard HE03D, Let's Sure S12, Moondrop, Kato. Every one of these IEMs is basically the take of their manufacturers, of what they believe to be a good quality sound. Um, and I'm sure that their engineers have done their very best to, to bring us and to offer us the best possible product. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they haven't done better before or that they should have tried maybe to do a little bit better because the chi-fi market today in 2022 is not the chi-fi market of 2019 let alone the chi-fi market of 2015 so the, the market has evolved so quickly that more and more i feel that it's an absolute necessity that yes not only a brand forgets its its core idea uh, you know not only should uh, let's say for example moondrop forget how what its core uh, um, uh, idea in terms of what sound is and 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 um, you know approve upon that that signature that they have which is 
very theirs and 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 try and give us a better product every single time but they should also be aware of what the other manufacturers are making so that they make sure that what they launch is on par is capable to battle capable to confront the other IEMs in a proper uh, in a in a proper way no um, maybe not the correct word in a in a in a in a in a competitive way okay so if they want to justify why they sound this way they have to know what the others sound like so that when they launch a product they say we did it like this because we know what the others are like and we know that this is better than that 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 in this aspect that aspect this aspect okay and not sometimes and, and I think sometimes some manufacturers, I'm not saying any of these manufacturers, mind you, this is just my my personal opinion. I feel that sometimes some manufacturers get caught up in the idea that they know it all. Uh, and it's either this way or the highway. And and that I think is a very uh, arrogant way of, of thinking. Again, let me repeat, that is my personal opinion. Okay. Anyway, on to today's review. Uh, the HE 3 D. The HE03D, uh, oh yeah, unquestionably, undeniably, okay, one of the most beautiful IEMs I own. Uh, one of the most, uh, at least technically, uh, in terms of, 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 of what was done by, by Wizard to create him. I mean, look at that face, like, that is something which is absolutely a thing of beauty. That's art there, that's art. That is pure art. So, unquestionably, a beautiful IEM. The usage of the materials in this IEM are just flawless. They've made a perfect combination of metal and glass and, and everything is just very premium. I mean, if you didn't know this was a wizard, uh, and if this came along with a price tag of $1,000, it wouldn't, in my opinion, uh, be offensive to anybody. I have seen IEMs costing way, way more than this, not looking as good as this, not feeling as premium, as well built as the Wizard is. And that has kind of always been very much the, 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 the philosophy of Wizard. They, they, they have this kind of steampunk look to some of their IEMs, like on the HE01. But if one thing is very sure or very present is that they always build things in a very exquisite manner. Uh, that coupled to that, uh, the fact that they, yes, I mean, there's a whole bunch of patents on, on the HE03, and, and, and those patents also report back to other models. So there is definitely some R&D being done there. There's definitely some, some proper research on how, uh, you know, to, to make an IEM and how it should sound. Fine. Um, just before I carry on, and I believe I did that in the unboxing or in the pre-review, but I just wanted to to reiterate uh, uh, one or two small um, points about the, the, the HE03. Just one second so I can get here my notes. Um, which is the pre-order price on the HE03 was one. 159 the normal price will be around one six one ninety nine dollars um, and uh, it's it's a semi-open design as I, sh I believe I showed in the other video but I'll show it to you again so it's got this huge huge vent over there which so it's a semi-open design and basically what that means is that in terms of um, isolation it's acceptable it's not the best but it's acceptable Okay, that I, I just wanted to say that because I, I, I didn't remember if I had mentioned that before or not. So, um, <coughs> being a fan of Wizard, because I am a fan of Wizard, I have to admit that I created certain expectations about it. I created expectations that it would be something, especially at this price tag, that would uh, really, really come along and, and shake the leaders of the $200 price bracket. And in my opinion, the leaders of the $200 price bracket were... The Hana 2021, closely followed by the, the, the Kato. Uh, so the Kato, the Hana 21, that was then joined by the BQEYZ um, uh, Autumn, and then at a little bit lower price, in the uh, up to, well, it's about $150, we have now the, the Let's Shore S12. So any one of these four IEMs here are 
um, definite go-to choices if you're looking for a good single dynamic or single planar IEM under $200. They all have their positives, they all have their negatives. The HANA 2021 is basically 80%, uh, 85% a oxygen. So it's got good tonality, it's got a bit more sub-bass. That extra sub-bass has made things not be as clear in terms of the vocals and the instruments and so on and so forth. But overall, it's it's a beautifully sounding IEM. The, the Kato is, in a nutshell, a grown-up aria. And if you like the aria, then you will know what sort of sound this brings along. It's got loads of detail up in the higher frequencies. And, and I've said it recently that the more I've actually listened to the Kato, I've actually started to appreciate it more and like more what it's capable of doing. And to certain extents, I've actually, in many certain, you know, many times, I've actually found songs that initially I liked it more in the Hana, and now I actually like it more in the Decato. The BQEYZ is uh, perhaps one of the underdogs in this price range, in the sense that technically it was very well done. I know that this, this, this um, IM was uh, under development for months, which again is something which is very, uh, very typical of BQEYZ. They don't just launch IMs for the launching. They launch IMs and this whole series of the, of the spring, the, the summer, the autumn, and I'm assuming there will be a winter. They've all been IMs which have been subjected to very good R&D as well. And they've listened to what people have said. And the autumn is an amazing single DD uh, I am, and I think that the fact that these filters that they have there, you see those filters there, okay, uh, are interchangeable, uh, allowing for such a very different uh, tuning uh, to, to be uh, obtainable, um, makes it probably the most versatile of all of these IMs because you can kind of adjust it to what your preference is more bass, less bass, more clarity, less clarity, um, and Overall, I, 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 I actually think that it's, 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 a, it's very much a, 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 a very unspoken of IEM, which is a pity. It should get more recognition. Okay. And um, the S12, well, what, what can we say about the S12? The S12, can, uh, if, if the Timeless came along from 7 Hertz and rocked the market in the sense of offering a planar that sounded good and didn't need all of this EQing and this and this and that, this thing came along and just kind of reformulated what uh, the Timeless did. They're very similar sounding. Uh, over, I mean, at the end of the day, they are very similar sounding, but they were are able to offer the same thing cheaper and in a, in a fit form or in a fit format um, that was more pleasing to more people, okay? Again, loads of detailed retrieval, um, this huge sound, every, I mean, amazing, okay? All of this presentation to bring me to the to the uh, HE03 because what I want to say about the HE03, I wanted to come across as being fair. I'm in no way going to say that it's a bad IEM because it isn't a bad IEM overall. I guess that there will be people that will enjoy what the HE03 is. Personally, I was disappointed because I was expecting something really truly fantastic having taken so long to have been launched i was expecting this to come along with a with a with a signature that would have the touch of of wizard obviously um but with all this implementation of all these this 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 you know the 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 mdbs uh, helmets uh, kind of system which is a multiple damping balance system which enables for the bass to be this tight and controlled. And you do notice the bass is tight and controlled, mind you. you the, the first thing you hear when you put on the, the, the HE03 is you hear this really thump. It's got thump. It, it really hits you hard. And, you know, with, with the music that I listened to, it was very, very noticeable. You, 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 there's no lack of bass here. But anyway, so there was so much put into this that I really was expecting something that was going to blow me away, that was going to add, you know, something that I would reach and say, you know what, we have the BQE was it, we have the HANA, we have the Kato, we have the S12, and now we have as well the HE03, and D, and, and all of these are almost the same, and, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, I, I cannot say that. And I cannot say that, why? 
I'll explain now. This bass that it has is very mid bass focused. There's this huge bump as I as I showed in in, in the, um, the the pictures that I posted of the graph. This is huge bump. This huge um, uh, accentuation. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the word properly. I hope I am. Of um, the the area around um, uh, around 100, 200, 300 hertz that just, in my opinion, spoils the rest of the presentation. It spoils it because it just m makes things excessively warm. Um, it, it it makes things sound uh, unnatural. Uh, in that it 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 see it looks like you've just taken an EQ and you've boosted that area up, and that is the main thing that disappointed me. You know, I'm not saying that it had to be neutral, but I, what I'm saying is that with with so much put into it in terms of design and and and, and having and, and you know wanting to implement all of these novel technologies. Um, I think that an effort could have also been made in, in, in trying to make sure that it was tuned really, really properly. Um, that, that it didn't have this mid-bass bump, that it, that it sounded really uh, coherent in its... In its uh, actually, I've actually got the graph here. Let me just show it to you so that way it, it's easier. So you see that bump there, 100, 200, 300? This, that bump there just... It just bleeds into the mids, um, and it just sounds. It just makes it sound wrong. The male vocals, if if it's a male vocal like Gregory Porter, it will sound overly warm. It will sound unnatural. Uh, female vocals will sound also overly warm, unnatural. And then you have um, you have this uh, this. Uh, oops, sorry. And then you have this um, this this the, the, this these peaks at five. Okay, uh, that I, I just I don't understand why 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 couldn't that the, that area there have been you know kept a little bit smoother? Why, why couldn't that whole area there be a little bit smoother over the decay? Why have these peaks? Uh, and as well, you can see some slight channel imbalance as well. And then these peaks that you have past ten k don't exactly translate themselves to that energy existing up top. So. It, it sounds slightly dark uh, and if you don't choose your tips carefully it, it, you will you will definitely see that it's it's uh, it's it's a dark sounding I am I mean I tried all sorts of tips I tried the the soundstage tips and I found that, that even uh, made it worse uh, with regards to the, the lack of energy up top um, I tried the, the easy tips and these ones I confess I didn't really like I, I just didn't like I took them out straight away I then had these uh, foams on for quite a while and the foams were surprisingly the, the, the tips that I was enjoying the most I was getting a sound that was acceptable to me let's put it that way although not what I was expecting it was being acceptable it was being fun to listen to with certain music and then uh, finally I ended up, uh, after having already tried the vocal tips, I ended up going back to the vocal tips. And these are the tips that I actually have on there now. Uh, I've also tried, I also tried some 07s, I tried some spin fits, I tried some JVC spiral dots. So it was not of lack of, of uh, tip rolling that um, I didn't try to, to get the, the wizard to sound like I wanted. It wasn't. I really did. So this excessive bass just makes things feel, in terms of the voices, overly full, and in my opinion, unnatural. Um, then there's also the issue of it's a 12 millimeter driver, okay? It's a 12 millimeter driver, so it's a big driver. Uh, the BQEYZ is the only one here that has a bigger driver, 13 millimeter, but then the rest is all 10, which is the normal standard. So you have a 12 millimeter driver, and this is the sub bass that you get. Honestly, I, I, I don't understand it. I, I just don't. I mean, I'm not saying it has to go crazy, but you have roll-off starting at 80 hertz. 70, 80 hertz, you have roll-off as well. And you feel it. You, you, you notice it. Trust me when I say that you notice it. You put on a song like, for example, Raising Malia. 
um, sorry, Raising Venus from Malia, you put on that song and trust me when I say, you will notice lack of sub bass on here, okay? Uh, you'll notice it. Even the HE01, which is not a sub bass monster, mind you, even the HE01 is able to give a little bit of a rumble there. And there's nothing, there's nothing that is even, uh, how can I even put this? There's nothing there that makes the song justice. Let's put it that way. You hear it on the moon drop which is again, no sub bass monster, but you hear it on the mood drop and it's there. You can feel the rumble. You can definitely feel the rumble on the BQEYZ and on the HANA. You can, you can even feel it on the S12. There's nothing there. So that sub bass roll off, no, no, I, I think, I think it, it, it could have been slightly more improved there. And then we come to the technicality side. And again, you know, you, you, you listen to it on its own and you feel that it's a closed in sound. It's, you feel that the sound is closed, it's, it's not open. And you notice that and you, 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 you can feel that openness in the sound when, for example, you listen to, let's say, uh, Gregory Porter holding on. You listen to that on here and you immediately take it out and you go on to a Moondrop Kato or you go on to the S12. And it just sounds huge, huge. So soundstage, very, very narrow in my opinion. Um, is it perhaps due to the fact of uh, that energy up top not being there as, as it should be? Maybe, it could be. Imaging obviously will also suffer from that. So imaging, uh, you, 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 you can see where instruments are and where voices are, but it... it it isn't on the level of a $200 IEM. You take an HE01, technically, technically, this is far better than the HE03, in my opinion. Far better. Um, it's not without flaw, mind you. Yes, it does get sibilant sometimes. Um, but technically wise, it's, it's a $70 IEM and it's superior to the HE03D, in my opinion, okay? So things like detailed retrieval also are affected by that over smearing, over warmth on the one hand, and then the lack of more treble energy, more treble information up top. So when we look at the graph and the graph is saying to us that we have all of that up top there, like it shows here, let me show you again, that is not really the case. Um, I would go as far as to say that, for example, you hear a Tripoan melee, which I complained uh, slightly that it, I would have liked a little bit more energy up top. And you hear a melee, and the melee has got more sparkle up top than the HE03D has. And I think that maybe it's actually there. Maybe, honestly, I, I really think that maybe that energy does exist. And the culprit for that energy not to shine is this is this bump and I think it could have easily been uh, it could have been easily uh, adjusted I mean uh, uh, I'm sure that the engineers of wizard are more than capable more than the knowledgeable enough to have been able to do that but like I said in the beginning of this video this is the way that they decided to tune this is the way they thought that the wizard 03 d should sound and I'm gonna respect it I'm going to say fine, all good. It's not, um, it's not what I was expecting, and maybe because of all the expectation created, the, my disappointment was, was greater. Uh, but no. As compared to all of these other IEMs that we have here, uh, I'll start with the HE01. As I said, the HE01 for me overall is a technically superior IEM. Um, in terms of the rest of the frequency range, I also think it's a more coherent um, uh, earphone. It doesn't have the slam that the HE03D has, but it's a, it's overall a more coherent sounding uh, IEM. Uh, would the HE03D be an upgrade to this? Well, you know what? I'm going to reply that to that to each its own. If if you really feel that this is the sound signature that you like then go ahead. 
if you want a more correct sounding let's put it that way then I still feel that the HE01 would be a better choice uh, T4C1 Lee um, again another AM that um, you know you either love or you don't love it's it's not perfect it's not a, a technical beast let's put it that way it has it's it's a, it has a, a, a signature uh, which you could consider like a slight V let's put it that way uh, nice sub bass very easy to listen a completely different presentation to the HE03D I mean uh, I'm, I'm sure that more people will probably be impressed by the HE03D because of its impact in the bass but when you start to really listen and want to pick up on the details and so on and so forth you can see that the, the Yuan Li is um, more capable again it will be all very much dependent on what you listen to and so on uh, now we enter the these two were cheaper propositions and that I wanted to also talk about now we enter more the the big boys let's put it that way first with the sure in every way for me a far superior IEM um, if I was in a, if I was going to buy an IEM and I had $150 or let's say I had $200 because this is the price bracket that I presented yeah this uh, would be um, the I ended probably would be my first choice simply because its price point is um, absolutely amazing. I mean, what Let's Sure have has been able to do with this is is nothing short of of absolutely amazing. Um, um, good technicalities. It's got good sub bass, uh, good bass, good slam. It's it's a very well done V signature. Very well done V signature. There's really nothing here that you can falter and, and say, oh, no, they've done this. Honestly, really nothing. Really, really nothing. It's a very nice sounding IM. Um, it has a lot of the, 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 the characteristics that planars usually are known for. It's got a very big, expansive sound. And you notice it very well when comparing it with the HE03. You, 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 you can pick up on it very well. Uh, as for the HANA 2021... <laughs> And this is perhaps where there will be a little bit of bias from my side, only because I'm a very big Tanschim fan. Um, but that bias, uh, it is what it is, because in this case, it's not a bias that will benefit it in any way, because it is a better IEM. The HANA 2021 is a superior. It's a more well-tuned IEM than the um, than the IG03D, in my opinion. It's a harmonish tuned IEM. And if you if you're a fan of harmon tuned uh, signature, you you will like the Hana Twenty Twenty One. Um, it's it's you know it's it's got very nice tonality, very correct. Uh, only in a few instances that is it maybe feel like okay this is a little bit overemphasized, but overall very nice. The technicality side as well, very good, very very good actually. Uh, imaging very decent. Uh, the only thing about the HANA 2021 is that sometimes with certain music, again, I'm talking about what I listen to, you get the feeling that it's a little bit on the edge, a little bit on the limit. But that's maybe just a feeling. BQ EYZ uh, Autumn. Um, and, and basically, I will say this. In terms of, of bang for the buck out of all of these IEMs that I have in front of you, this... And the literature are the definite choices. The fact that, again, I repeat what I just said earlier, that you can tune this with these filters and adjust the sound signature to your taste makes it a no-brainer because you like less bass and you can adjust it that way and, and be happy. You like more bass, you can do that way. You like more clarity, you like less. You can, do, you can adjust those things, those parameters. And that makes it... Well, on on that alone, a, a superior choice to the HE03D. And finally, the the Kato. Uh, and the biggest thing that you notice about the Kato when you compare it with the HE03 is how clean and detailed it is. It's very noticeable, very noticeable. You you hear all the little sparkles and so on and so forth. And the detail retrieval of the Kato is is really something else. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's like I say, I, I, I don't, I, I respect the 
tuning that was was a, was a, attempted in the in the in the whizzer. I respect the, the the engineer, the the sound engineer that, that did it, and and he did this to his to probably to his image to what he thought would be um, the ideal tuning. But I am also sure that uh, many people will will share my opinion uh, with regards to the whizzer leaving a little bit uh, to be desired. Um, I was expecting a, a more polished signature, uh, you know, uh, I was expecting maybe a, a nicely done V-shaped like on the S12 or, or, or the, these or these different takes of Harman like we have here on the, on the, on the HANA and on the, the Moondrop uh, or as well the, this, this um, very much uh, also kind of, it's also a V-shaped signature that, that we have here on the, on the BQE. I said, I was expecting something like that, you know? Um, um, look, it's just simple. The wheel has been invented. No need to, you, you can take, a, you know, you can make it bigger, smaller, but the wheel has been done. I, I think I, I, I'm trying to, I think I can, by saying that, people will understand what I'm trying to say. You know, this is a good IEM, and I'm sure that there will be people that will enjoy it. However, I feel that the percentage of people that will enjoy it versus the percentage of people that will expect or were expecting something more from it the same way as I was expecting is going to be much lower. Uh, and it's really a pity because I'm a, I'm a fan of Wizard. I like their products. Um, and I, I, I was really, re and I'm a big fan of single DDs. And I was really hoping that they would have come out with something that was really going to make the more established names, you know, like Moondrop and, 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 and the Tense Gym. Uh, like kind of, oh, wow. Uh, the, this, the, and honestly, no. Um, and that's basically it, guys. Anyway, I'm not going uh, not gonna to drag this any longer. Uh, decent I am in terms of construction and, and accessories and all of that uh, in terms of sound uh, you'll have to have a listen and then decide for yourself honestly for me personally, for my music, for what I listen to it's fun and engaging in some stuff uh, but the majority of what I listen to is, uh, is, is left uh, very much under, under it, it's very underwhelming it, it just you know uh, I get more fun out of this, and this is not perfect. The HE01 is able to get me more in the mood than the HE03. That's it. Anyway, guys, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.